Hey everyone, I want to show you how to earn some points uh, for the next slide in your virtual sketchbook. And that's by doing two little, oh, scientific paintings. One dealing with subtractive color and the other one uh, trying to make sort of a Pink Floyd album cover, uh, having white light go into a prism and then bend so that you can see that spectrum or that rainbow. So I'm going to show you how to do this from uh, start to finish. And here we go. First thing you're going to need is some kind of a straight edge, like a ruler or plastic triangle, so we can make a triangle. Uh, next thing you're going to need is some kind of round thing. Ooh, let's put this in front of me. This is just a roll of tape, but it might be a, a coffee mug or something, something that has a round base, uh, so that we can make our three circle, sort of a three circle Venn diagram. So let's get to it. Check this out. I put on my document camera here, and I will baby step you through this. Not that you're babies. We're gonna go slow. Okay, where is my document camera? Hmm, this is very strange. Let's try getting rid of my background. See if that solves our problem. Hey, there we are. Sorry about that. All right. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these three circles. So you simply need like a roll of tape or something. I'll put one up top like this. I like this tape because I can kind of see through. And then I'll put another one over here. So I'm trying just to kind of make like a, oh, like a football shape inside of here. Once you see that, you know you're in good shape. Yeah. There we go. And I'm gonna do one more circle. And this time I'm trying to get kind of a triangular trying to make this middle part look like it's kind of got the same on each side. That's it. Just three circles like that. Of course, I'm going to use primary colors in each of these. And as these overlap one another, because they're transparent, I should get my secondary colors here. And then who knows what we're going to get in the middle. If you're uh, lucky and you do this right, it will likely be a good brown. Uh, I don't think it's going to get black, though. Now, I've got some water here. Let me zoom out a little bit. I've got my watercolors. You could use this palette of watercolors that you've got, although these are a little higher quality. So for just a little sketching activity like this, uh, let's just use these basic colors. I'm gonna start with a yellow. Just put some water in there, mix it up. Maybe a little bit more. I've got some surface area to cover here. And I'll just give this one some attention. Of course, if you want to make it look really pretty, then yes, go slow and stay inside the lines. You can see I go a little slower around the edges. A little more care and precision goes into those. You could just use the point of this if you want, kind of like a pencil. You'll notice I hold mine like a pencil. And now for these big flat areas, I lay the brush down flat and just go a little quicker. All right, so that's it for now. Now you might be thinking, why don't you just do the next one? Well, I need to let that dry first. Otherwise, the color is going to bleed and move and make a big mess. So that will take about five minutes to dry, unless you have one of these, a little hair dryer. This is from a little curling uh, dryer, but that works too if you take the end off. So I'm gonna heat this up really quick. In other words, dry it up really quick. All right, that's probably not dry enough yet. I can still feel that it's not quite there yet. But what I'm going to do, and I'm glad I did this one first, I'm just going to put this to the side for now, and I will come back to it. If you want, yes, you could put a hair dryer on it for two or three minutes, and then you'd be ready for the next step. But we might as well make our triangle since I've got my triangle here. So we're trying to make a nice triangle right in the middle here. Just sort of your best equilateral triangle. There we go. All right, so I got myself a triangle. So what I'm gonna do is have my rainbow of colors coming out this side, if you can see that, I'll just 
There we are. I just drew a couple lines there. And I need to leave this part white. So it looks like there's a beam of white light coming into this, which again, that's hard to see under my document camera, something like that. All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna start with my colors. And actually, this is nice. I have these sort of already in rainbow order. But one thing you should know, let's get this, there we go, uh, is that typically a rainbow would start with red on one side. So although you could start with yellow and that might be the first one in your palette, I'm gonna start with a red here. There we go. And again, you can just use the point of the paintbrush to be more precise. Now this time, I'm not gonna wait for these two to dry. I'm gonna clean my brush out, I'm just tapping it here in the water. And now I'll go right into my orange. Or you could go into yellow and watch them kind of bleed together. But when you do a wet and wet technique, those two colors should kind of blend together. I'm gonna to do the next one too. Let's go yellow, I'll go kind of quick here. Now I'm gonna put the yellow right here first. And then as I get closer to that orange, well, you can see it start to bleed there. It's gonna blend back and forth. And I'll tap out my brush and go for some green. All right. So I'm like twirling my brush. And here comes the green color. And again, that might bleed or blend right into the yellow part. Now, if you're a perfectionist like me, watch this. I'm gonna squeeze out my brush with my two fingers here so it's nice and dry. And I'm gonna pick up this little mistake. I don't like that. I'm being a perfectionist. But if you have a little too much bleeding, you can always use your brush like a sponge and you can just pick that back up. All right, now I'm going into the blue and all I have left is blue and purple. So blue is next, do this. Ooh, I want a richer blue. So a little less water and a whole lot of spinning and I get a nice, well, slightly darker blue. Let's let that bleed right into that green. And lastly, I need my violet or purple, whichever you prefer. And there we go. So I'm looking for a real smooth transition from one color to the next. So it looks really nice. Uh, if you have lines there that you don't like, you could take a clean kind of dry brush. I just squeezed mine out and you can work this a little bit. You can try to blend it a little better and kind of shade if you like. And you can get a nice smooth transition. But you know, I'm pretty happy with that. Let me clean that up a little bit. All right, I'm just gonna let that dry because next thing I'm going to do is use black all around here. Well, not right there where the white line is. Hopefully you could see that. And then black around here. So this looks really cool. So watch your bleeds. Try to get a nice smooth transition. It might be a good time to come back to this one. Let's see how this one's doing. Yeah, that feels pretty dry now. So now I can take another primary color like red. And if all goes well, we should end up with orange right here or right here. You decide which way you wanna go. Maybe I'll go this way. So. Red. So we should get a nice pure red out here. But because these watercolors are transparent, we'll end up with a secondary color, which is what happens when you mix two primaries, red and yellow, and you get orange. And I'm thinking you guys know this, but this is just a gr great way to refresh and remind how this works. All right, again, notice how I go slow around the edges and just rather quickly here in the center. So uh, I think you'll agree, kind of looks orange right there. Now, of course, I can't do the blue right now because I need to let it dry first. So get out your hair dryer if you like.
and I should do it a little bit longer. It's obviously not ready. It's still kind of wet. But what you're going to do, folks, is go back and forth between these two. Uh, let this one dry for a bit. And what I'm going to do is start to paint some black around here, and I'll come up to this color last. Because when you have wet color next to wet color, it bleeds, it moves, and it does funny things. But if you want a better result, just stay away from the wet areas for now. So now I'm going to use black. And I think I'll start right over here where I've got my line of color coming in. And again, watch how I can just use the point of this. Very precise. Yeah, there we go. And if you find that it's kind of gray, well, then you might need to get some more pigment. So there's gonna be lots of getting water, mixing it up. Let's get this slower here. I'm gonna get this to look really nice. There we go. And I think I'm gonna leave a rough edge on mine just so it looks more realistic and something like that. I'm gonna have a just a rough border around the outside. Or if you want later, you could cut yours and make it really clean. All right, another thing I can do, I don't have to always work that way. I'm finding it more comfortable to turn this upside down and do it this way. And there's that thin beam of light going into my prism. And then I'll fill this part in. So I think you get the idea. At this point, you're like probably, okay, I'm gonna leave you now, Mr. Linderman. I know what to do next. Ooh, yeah, let's get this really rich and dark. Colors always look louder and brighter when they're next to some really dark black. So by now, yeah, that's dry now. Perfect, I'm gonna keep bringing this around. Again, notice how I just push that brush flat when I wanna work a little quicker, but I go nice and slow and use the point when I want to be more precise. So this shouldn't bleed if it's dry enough. There we go. And of course, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to revisit this one and put blue in there. It's almost ready. It's probably almost dry enough. There we go. And one last little section. And you will have made your very own prism with a rainbow coming out of it. This is kind of an iconic image. Well, especially if you're a Pink Floyd fan, because their Dark Side of the Moon album cover looked just like this. And I know that's before your time for most of you, but if you're ever bored, check out the Dark Side of the Moon. It's some good stuff. All right, that one's basically done. Just need to let it dry. Let me revisit this one. I'm really tapping my brush. That's how I clean it. I just really aggressively tap, 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 straight up and down. All right, let's see if that, yeah, that feels pretty dry. So now I will use blue. And if I'm doing this right, obviously putting this blue circle here should create a greenish color and a violet or purple color here. So here we go. Let's see how well this works. Oh, there's that green color coming in. There's that purple color coming in. Hey, it's working. It's like magic. So I've got some puddling here. I have a lot of paint there. So I'm gonna move that around so it is a bit thinner. And I need a bit more. Again, feel free to turn this. You are not bound to working just one direction. I've got lots of pigment here. So I'm gonna move this all around. Get over here. Again, practice using the point of the brush and using the side of the flat part of the brush. It's a little difficult for you to see underneath my document camera, but indeed I have got a greenish and a purplish kind of a hue there. So I'm gonna clean this up. And I think I'm just gonna bring up some of this pigment because I've got a lot down there. Oof. Maybe I should have used a hair more water. So I'm cleaning my brush squeezing out between my two fingers all the excess water and just picking up some of this puddling. Oh, and I hope I haven't gone too far here. Maybe I should just give it a rest. All right, but well, once this dries, it'll be a bit more obvious. Right now it looks really dark for some reason. 
under that camera. But if you do this right, you have to trust me, it looks differently uh, the way I'm looking at it than it does underneath the camera here. But it looks like a nice green, nice purple. Once that dries, um, you should have kind of, a, kind of a strange brownish color in the middle. And if you really feel like it, you could go back in with a little bit of brown and you could put some brown in there or even black, it's up to you. Uh, if you wanna color the outside, you can with some black to really make it pop. That's about it. So these two, once they're dry and completed, should go into your sketchbook and I will give you 50 points, 25 for each. Won't take you too long. Good luck.